From London, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is The Standard. Londoners now face a clear choice in a two-horse race. With less than two weeks to go until the election, the London mayoral race is heating up. This is a year of historic choice and of historic challenge. A new exclusive YouGov poll for The Standard has shown that the Conservatives' Susan Hall is closing the gap on the current Mayor of London, Labour's Sadiq Khan. The Tory contender is on 27%, up three points from February, and her Labour rival is on 46%, down three points. Mr Khan still leads by 19 points. But with the countdown to Election Day on the 2nd of May truly on, could this two-horse race get even closer? I'm now joined by Ross Lydell, our City Hall editor and transport editor. Ross, is Susan Hall closing the gap with Steve Khan? It, Susan has managed to close the gap, which is not entirely unexpected, but it's a small closing of the gap, shall we say. Uh, there was something of a great divide. There's still a considerable divide. It still looks like Sadiq is going to win if we believe the polls are accurate uh, and reflect what Londoners will do on May the 2nd. According to the pollsters, this has come from YouGov for the Evening Standard, Sadiq retains a commanding lead, but the latest sort of scores on the doors are that Susan is on 27%, which is up three points, and Sadiq is on 46%, which is down three points. So whereas a couple of months ago he had a 25-point lead, he now has a 19-point lead. 19 is quite a big number. What are some of the other key takeaways from this poll? Well, in terms of the other candidates, they are sort of doing modestly well. Zoe Garbert, the Green, is on nine. Rob Blackie, the Lib Dem, is on eight. Howard Cox, who is the Reform Party candidate, who is essentially the main anti ulez candidate. If you look beyond Susan Hall, he's on six. So each of those has the ability to take thousands of votes away from either Sadiq or Susan, because, of course, this time round, It's the the first-past-the-post system that's in use. It's not the uh, two-vote system that has been used in every other mayoral election since 2000. So basically, anybody voting for these fringe candidates only gets one crack of the whip. And if their candidate doesn't get through, then that vote is lost. It really is a sort of essentially a two-horse race. That's the way it's shaped up to be under first-past-the-post. It's either very likely to be either Sadiq or Susan because of the voting system we've got. The other thing to bear in mind is that within the votes of the support for Susan and Sadiq, it rather shows a tale of two cities, uh, not quite as Charles Dickens described, but in outer London, uh, Susan is creeping up on Sadiq. You would think that actually in outer London, she should be stronger, far stronger if she's got any chance of victory. But the latest scores are that she's on 33% and Sadiq on 38%. That's in outer London. Whereas in inner London, Sadiq is an unbelievable 64% and Susan 14, which is frankly diabolical. And if she pulls that lowly, Actually, on polling day, then she will have no chance of seizing City Hall. Sadiq Khan launched his manifesto yesterday and you were there for the launch. What was it like? What were some of the standout policies? And how do you think they'll go down with Londoners? The, the first thing that was notable about Sadiq's manifesto launch, which was done in a sort of mini conference centre just beside the O2 Arena in North Greenwich, was the appearance of the Labour Party deputy leader, Angela Rayner. Now, she has been a friend of the front pages, shall we say, over the last few weeks eh, because of the fuss over the sale of her former council house. Now, sadly, she didn't take any questions, certainly not from the Evening Standard afterwards, but it was notable that she decided to come along and support Sadiq. She did speak to the audience, but rather sort of hot-tailed it out of the room afterwards. So that was notable. In terms of the launch itself, I think it would have to be described as a successful one. It was all very polished. There was a lot of support from Sadiq. These were his own people, if you like, many assembly members or councillors or labour activists. Nevertheless, it all went off pretty well. And he published his manifesto, which is something that Susan has not yet done. So, um, you know, media attending were able to get in their hands a shiny little sort of 90 page document, a bit like a giant football programme in which Sadiq set out his vision for a third term. The sort of blockbuster policy in Sadiq's manifesto is to continue free school meals for all 
uh, London primary school children for four more years. This is a policy that started last September. It was introduced as a one-year sort of emergency policy by Sadiq to try and alleviate the cost of living crisis. But he's now promised that should he be re-elected on May the 2nd, he will continue this for four more years. It's not cheap. It costs £140 million a year, but it has proved very popular with many, many parents, certainly from my own experience at my daughter's school. This has really cut through. Parents are very well aware that they no longer have to pay any money for school lunches for their child or to go to the hassle of uh, making packed lunches. So Sadiq has, uh, I think, earned the, uh, the support of many Londoners with this policy. He had a couple of other pledges on possibly extending the fares freeze if economic conditions allowed. He talked about uh, trying again to get the, the Olympics back to London. You know, he, he did say a few years ago that he wanted the 2036 Olympics to come to London. That didn't happen. He's now aiming for the 2040 Olympics. So there was plenty in the manifesto to catch the eye. Is it a convincing case for a third term? Well, you know, I think we have to wait and see on that. But it wasn't a bad effort. The other big issue that Sadiq did tackle in his manifesto is of paper mile. He has been accused by the Tories and Susan Hall of planning essentially secretly to introduce a paper mile scheme. This would uh, replace the ULEs and the congestion charge and mean that motorists would have some sort of little detector in their car which would charge them according to the time they travelled and how far they travelled and what kind of vehicle they used. Now, this was a policy that was in Sadiq Khan's book a year or so ago, and it was something he asked Transport for London to investigate. So some research has been done. However, he has been quite clear for about the past nine months that he was saying, paper mile will not happen on my watch, not while I'm mayor. He's accused the Tories of dirty tricks and trying to keep this issue alive. So at his manifesto launch, he made efforts to essentially shut down this debate. And, and I asked him about this just when I got a chance to catch up with him after the launch.